So, good morning. Welcome to episode two. Uh, today I'm going to finish up the Sea Beastie Metropolis, so that's what's coming up. Um, also, uh, I'd like to welcome Michael Garfield to the show. Um, he's doing the music for right now, and so the background music to this is from his album, um, Pavo Music for Mystery, and you can find him at michaelgarfield.bandcamp.com. So, thanks a lot for being there with the music. So anyways, I hope you enjoy. Take care. Bye. Okay, so here we are. We're back. This is one that I just started um, about two days ago. It's going to be a small one. It's basically a test for Fabriano paper. So, and I haven't even actually finished the drawing completely yet, so I'm going to start on that. Okay. I don't think I need much detail for this one. This is pretty small, so it's just not going to require a lot of a lot of drawing, really. Um, let me see. Let me get my brushes rearranged here a little bit. I do have a sort of order to this stuff. So I do like this paper. It really brings out the color. Which is kind of interesting because to my eye it doesn't look like it's as white as a lot of the other papers. It looks like a lot yellower.
these, uh, every time I paint these, I think of the Big Rock Candy Mountain song. Yeah, I like the way this paper handles. It's good. It is good. Now, I like... This red-looking, weedy grass that exists here on this planet, or whatever it is. grows on the flat surfaces, it doesn't grow on the vertical ones. Okay. <sighs> and see, I have this problem. Now I've done all of this area with this red, and it's still wet. So I can't work there. Otherwise, I'll have a catastrophe. So, now's a great time to work on these two and then flip the whole thing over. So that's what I'll do.
and see when it's on a board like that, it's really easy to just turn over and work on the other side. But since we're going this way, Yeah, this one won't take long. I'm not too worried if they go over the lines a little bit because you won't see it, number one, and number two, it makes shadows when you put it all together at the end. first layer of that.
Okay. And it's time for a break. Okay, so we're back after a long break, actually after a night's sleep. Um, I did some work on this last night without recording. I added some indigo to the frames of the windows here. I filled in this sea beastie thing and started with these. This is basically close to finished, but I don't think it's completely finished yet. I think it needs a few more things. So, what do we do here? That's my two. Some more indigo. There. Um, before I go any further, I don't know if you. You might want to go back and look at the other video that I did with some of these colors while they were wet. The colors dry a lot brighter than when they go on the page. A lot. So you have to account for that. So if you get a dark spot in your page, don't immediately panic. There's ways to fix that. So yeah, we've got music now. Michael Garfield, an old friend of mine and a guy I used to play with in a music project about 13 years ago, has graciously donated his entire Bandcamp collection of music for use on this show. So, you probably already noticed there's a musical background. Please say thanks to Mike for that. And uh, if you have music or know somebody who writes music that would be good for this kind of thing, have them contact me, and I'll put it in the show and use it somewhere, and they'll get credit for it, and I'll put a slide up with who they are and what their contact info is and all that good stuff. So that would be cool. Okay, really, the only thing left to do, I think... Oh, I gotta do something about that right there. Probably another reason why you need to be organized when you work is so you don't forget little places like that. I'm not as good about that as I should be. Alright, let's just get some water on a brush. I want to smooth out some colors here.
see I use different waters for different colors. So like I have a thing of blue water here that I use a lot when I'm working with blue colors, a thing of yellow when I'm working with yellow colors. But sometimes you can go back in here with just the water. It gives you just a little bit of shading. I spent a lot of time reading about how people, how famous watercolors in Britain in the 16 and 1700s and 1800s came. And they didn't follow any of the rules that you hear about today. None of them. Absolute zero. Anything that worked, they used it. They did underdrawings and underpaintings just like with oils. 
They did lots of glazing techniques. They used gouache or egg temper to bring down the highlights to the right temperature of white. Did all kinds of stuff like that. I, I do not know where this modern invention came from that everything's just supposed to be. Woof. Look a wash. Ooh, look a wash. What a dark one. It's a boat in the sea. I don't know where people came up with that idea, man. That's, that's not, not everything about watercolor. It'll do what you want it to do, man. It'll take some time. It's definitely not the easiest medium. Although, if you work at it, it's probably not really as hard as people think. I was watching some YouTube videos last night. There's a guy called Sketch who paints with um, spray paint hands and does some really amazing stuff, realistic looking. You should check that out. Definitely worth looking at. This one's about finished. Cool. So, do I want to add anything more to this? Yeah, I do actually. No substitute for a rigger when you need one. Those are the brushes. Yep, anyway, so I'm going to stop there. I like that. So when I'm done, Easiest way to get this off. Just cut it off. I just put it down with masking tape. Since I use really heavy paper, it doesn't really need to be stretched the same way that 140 or 90 pound does. I hate stretching watercolor paper. It's a pain in the ass. It's messy. And half the time it doesn't work the way that it's supposed to. And really you need staples to do it right. And this tape. 
tape is a lot stickier than the last batch. Yeah, I really see that. Pull away from the paint. It'll come off. See, it makes a nice line there. And when you mat it, you won't lose part of the picture because you didn't paint that part. Yeah, the trick is, is to pull down and away. If you had to stretch your watercolor paper, I'll show you how to deal with that later. I got a way to get that off easily. The gum tape. Okay. And so that's our illustration. Right there, or painting, or whatever it is. I'll put a signature block in somewhere. I don't know, maybe it'll go down here. I didn't really plan for that here. Or, I don't know, maybe it'll go up here or something. That's part of the painting, I think, at least from my perspective. So, anyways, that's another one finished. And uh, we'll be back later on. I got some more stuff to work on today. I'll probably make a, another one later. Take care. Bye. Yeah. Let's Yeah. There you go.